chapter 11, verses 1 to 7. Book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 7. We're going to pick up on those verses there. Here are a few pages rustling still. Book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verses 1 to 7. All right, if you dare say amen. amen. All right, let's see what God's Word has to say to us this morning. It says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For, for by it the elders obtained a good testimony. For by faith, by faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the Word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. By faith, Abel offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, through which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, though if he being dead still speaks. By faith, Enoch was taken away so that he did not see death and was not found because God had taken him. For before he was taken, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But without faith it is impossible to please Him. For he who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of those who diligently seek Him. By faith Noah, being divinely warned of things yet not seen, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household, by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Now, I know many times we read Scripture, but do we actually read the Scripture for what it's actually saying? You know, we just skim through it. I'm telling you, some of those verses in there, I'm telling you, they shouldn't make a Baptist shout. I'm telling you, they, they, you ought to get excited when you read some of these things for what it says. I mean, what God did for us and what He has done and what He's going to do, I'm telling you. How can we not live out our faith? What, all we're trying, all living out your faith is living out what you say you believe. You say you believe in God, how to live it out. Living out our faith is difficult at times, but we uh, are often even unsure how to apply it to our life. When we apply our faith to our life, it changes everything. As Christians, we have the Holy Spirit. Now sometimes when you talk about the Holy Spirit, people are terrified. They're not sure what to expect about that. The Holy Spirit is part of the Holy Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Spirit. It's, the Holy Spirit is so misunderstood. You know, every, everybody loves Jesus, but we're not, not so much with God and the Father so much and the Holy Spirit. We're not even sure what that exactly even entails and how that is involved in our life. You see, the Spirit does a great work in our life. The Spirit instills wisdom in us as well as power. With the empowering of the Holy Spirit, it gives us, you know, I guess the world would say insider information. He instills things in you. He gives you a clarity to see things that maybe others can't see. You can see past things a lot of times. God instills that. Faith is a tangible response to a spiritual reality. There's a spirit world just as real as the one we live in. With, with us talking about faith, I ask you, how does your faith manifest itself in your life? It should manifest somehow. You can't have faith and nothing comes out. How does, how does it come out in your life? How does it manifest itself? Just to say you have faith and there's, there, there, there's, there's nothing going on? I'm not sure all what you got happening there. You see, the book that we just read, the book of Hebrews, it's called the faith chapter. It lists many heroes of the faith, but what it actually does, it shows us what a living faith looks like and how, what it produces. It, it talks about it just in the verses that we talked about. You see, faith says it's possible. Fear says it's impossible. That's why we have that on the sign out there with everything that's going on. Faith over fear. As a Christian, what is it that we have to fear? We have God on our side. Faith says it is po possible. All things are possible with God. I don't care what your situation is. I don't have, care how dark and gloomy it may look. And I don't care who has said what. God said it is possible with me. 
All things are possible. So any, any darkness that you may be in or any situation that looks so gloomy, I'm telling you, God has a, can make a way. Don't ever think not. I tell you, a lot of times, what I see, a lot of times, our faith really doesn't look like faith many times. What I see is our faith looks like worry and stress instead. Oh, I'm having great faith, but they're stressed out and they're worried about everything. Is that worry? Worry, is, a faith is trusting in a God that you can't see. But yet we're all worried and we're stressed out about everything. Saying you have great faith doesn't give you great faith. Living it out shows how much your faith really is. Look at somebody's life. You can see what their faith is really like. I don't care what they say. People will tell you anything. You know in this world. They will say anything. When I see somebody worried and stressed out, I'm like, well, you know what? I know what they're saying, but I also know what I'm seeing. So I ask you, what does your faith look like? Does it involve a lot of worry and a lot of stress? Now, I know we're not perfect, and we all do it at times. It just happens. But if you've got a lot more worry and a lot more stress than you do faith, something's got to change somewhere. You may know where your help comes from, but it looks like when you're worrying and stressing, you're worrying that God is not going to get it right. Yes, I prayed about it, but God might not get it right. So you're worried and stressed about it. I don't think God's ever got one wrong yet. Now what it is, you're worried and stressed about it because it may not go your way. Now I've prayed before and some things it just didn't go my way and I don't understand why. I didn't think it was a bad prayer. I didn't think it was a selfish prayer, but it didn't, do, it didn't go my way. Does that mean it was wrong? No, absolutely not. God ain't got one wrong yet. Evidently there was something amiss that I didn't see. See, I'm not privy to be, have, be able to know everything that God is doing. You know, that's where faith comes in. If I already knew it in advance, I wouldn't need faith. Because I would already know the outcome of it. That's not faith at all. That's something else. You know, we could learn a lot from Noah. We, we talked about Noah here in one of the uh, verses here. You know, some of the things you can learn not to do. But a lot of things you could learn what to do. When, for Noah, faith was making preparations based on what God said. Now, do we, as Christians, does our faith lead us to make preparations of what God said or, or what we think is right? You know, sometimes I think I can be, I think I'm right, and I think I'm sincerely right. I end up later, you find out you're sincerely wrong. You know, sometimes it just happens. Think about some of the things earlier in your life that you maybe you thought was really right. And now look at your life now. And your thinking should have changed over the years. And you're just like, wow, how wrong was I? You know, have you ever been told a lie and you believed it? Yeah, we've all, no, no, everybody's bought them before. You know, some people, I don't care how sharp you are, some people are really good liars. So sometimes you get taken hook, line, and sinker. So I had to make preparations on what God said. Not anybody else said, no matter how what I feel. That's what Noah did. It seems like, if you look at life, anyway, it, it just from what I've gathered, it just seems like life goes in cycles at times. You know, things, you know, they say history repeats itself, and I really believe it does at different times. But it seems like our life, too, it goes in cycle, in cycles. And sometimes with our faith, it even goes in cycles. It seems like to me, and it was just from my perspective of it. And when I was looking at Noah's life, it seemed like he had a cycle of faith in his life as well. Some of the things I jotted down was God gave Noah eyes to see something that was unseen. He, he couldn't have already known all these things. God gave him eyes to see something, but he followed through. He prepared for them like it was a foregone conclusion. God saw things Noah couldn't see. Praise God, we've got somebody on our side who already knows in advance what we should be doing, but it's hard for us to follow. It's, even though we have faith and we believe in God, and we're saved and we're going to make our home in heaven one day, it is hard for us to follow through many times with what God is actually saying. But Noah built the ark as, it was a, as if it was a foregone conclusion. He didn't doubt, you know, for what, for what the Scriptures God says, he just went ahead and he built that ark. 
you know what? We have the knowledge now that we know that was a smart move. But in his day, that seemed like one of the most outlandish, foolish things you could have ever done. Why would you build an ark? It had never rained before. Can you imagine? They say, there goes the crazy man. He's out there building a boat. It's going to rain. They're probably saying, what's rain? It had never rained. Somehow the plants and the trees and the fields were somehow watered from the ground somehow. I don't really know how, but it had never rained. And this man's out here building this giant boat. Can you imagine the ridicule he got for following what God said? He did it as a, like it was a foreground. It was going to happen. God said it. I believe it, so I'm going to go ahead and follow it. He didn't, you know, many times, what do we do? All right, I'm going to follow. Let's see what happens. If it don't work out, I'll just turn around. I'll try something else. Let's see what happens. What kind of faith is that? That wasn't the faith Noah had. He built as if it was a foregone clue. God said it, so I, you know, he might not have known the timetable. Because I don't see the scripture where he said exactly when it was going to happen. But he just followed through. See, in many times we put God on our... God tells you something, we put Him on our timetable. Well, I've waited uh, a week and I ain't seen nothing yet. I've waited two weeks. I've waited a year. Did God tell you exactly when it was going to happen? Many times He'll tell you things and He don't tell you when. He spoke to me many times. I'm like, okay, God, I'm still waiting. Now, there's things that He's told me many years ago. They have not come to pass yet. <coughs> they have not come to pass at all yet. I can, I can see them in the future at some point, but they haven't happened yet. I don't know why, for whatever reason. Things go in cycles. I ask you, what does your faith look like? Are you making preparations based on what God says? Or whatever it is that you feel like? Whatever just happens to strike you? Or are, are you one of those kinds of, let's just see what happens. You know, if God has spoken to you, you need to move forward. You see, we are never going to fully understand the potential of what God says to us before we do it. You know, sometimes, sometimes God will tell you something and it's, it's so small, it doesn't seem like it seems like it's so insignificant. But we never know the potential of what God is going to uh, do with that beforehand. See, we have to act on faith. How will we ever see what's going to happen if we never act out? Well, I've never seen anything happen in my life. But I ask you, what exactly is it you're doing with your life? You know, your life is going to produce something sooner or later by the things that you're doing, the choices that you're making. You're going to produce something sooner or later. And sometimes, you know, my life, I didn't like the results I was getting. So what? I had to change something. Something needed to change in my life. And our spiritual life, we know that we are to walk by faith, not by sight. Everything that you see is not going to work out. You know, this might look like the way to go. But I'm telling you, you know, you've got to walk by faith. Many today say seeing is believing. When I see it, I will believe it. But to me, believing is seeing. When I believe, I see things differently now. It's, it's not the same anymore. I, I, I see it with a different sight because God instills things in you. you know, and you, you, you will see things differently when God has a hold of you. When God really had, you know, believing is seeing in my book. I, uh, there was a quote I'm getting ready to give you. I, I've, I've loved this one for many years. Um, a guy named Blaine Pascal said this. It says, In faith there is enough light for those who want to believe and enough shadows to blind those who don't. In other words, if you want to believe, you will. If you don't, you won't. It's one of those things. You can talk to somebody until you're blue in the face. If, they don't, if they're not going to believe, they're just not going to believe. You could explain everything in the Scriptures with complete clarity, and they're still going to have their doubts and not believe. Whereas somebody else, you know what? They could just get a little glimpse, and God could speak to them, and they'll believe. If the choice is yours. You either have to believe or you don't. You know, many times, uh, sometimes we go the extra mile, and there's nothing wrong with that. They try to... Uh, get somebody to believe, but sometimes they just got to take it on. Either you're going to believe or you're not. Our faith is tried many times when we face difficult circumstances. Who here has never faced a difficult circumstance? I guarantee you there's probably many in here today got something going on right now. 
there's something going on in your life that seems so difficult, maybe overwhelming right now in your life. The question is, is that circumstance weakening you or strengthening your faith? You see, God allows circumstances to happen, but dosage, anything that draws you away from God is not of God. God is never going to draw you away from Him. I do not believe that. Whatever it is, He's going to draw you to Him to strengthen you. The thing with circumstances is, what I find is they're always changing. You know what? You might climb that mountain today. You might overcome whatever it is with great faith, whatever you got going on. But there's going to be another mountain to climb sooner or later. Sooner or later, there's going to be another problem arise that you're going to have to face. You know what? You need to face it just like you face the other one, with faith. You say, I'm tired. I'm worn out. Well, that's all of us. We get tired and worn out from this world and the thing that drains you, it takes it out of you. But I'm telling you, God is trying to tell you to press on. And you can only do that with the equipping and the power of the Holy Spirit how God strengthen us, strengthens us. And, uh, you know, many times, you know, People say, you know what, I have a hard time relating to God. I have a hard time relating to Jesus. You know what, I, I know when I see Jesus, you know, He was 100% man and 100% God. He is the only 200% person, if you will. But when I read about the people in the Bible, well, they were just like me and you. They had their flaws, they had sin, they messed up at times, and sometimes they were just downright screwed up in the head at times. Some of the stuff they did. And you wonder, what in the world were they thinking? But sometimes when I, when I look in there, I can draw strength from them. You know, some, you ever notice about some of these people in the Bible? Some of them lived an entire life full of great faith. You could just see all through their life. But there were some of them, that wasn't the case at all. Some of them had just lived life just any kind of way they want. But God used them in certain situations. He, he raised them up for certain situations. They had to step forward into it, but God used them. But whatever it is, to me, when I read it, they inspire me. Because I'm like, they're messed up just like I am. They got problems just like I do. But yet God used them. God saved them. God equipped them with the Holy Spirit. You know what? There is hope for me. As messed up as I am at times, as messed up as my life has been, there is hope for me. Well, there's hope for you as well. Don't ever think there's no hope. There is hope out there. I don't care what you've done in your life. I don't care what you've got going on right now. There is hope for you. Don't ever think there's not. When God is speaking into your life, I really believe if you're paying any kind of attention, you will know. And you can't listen to what the, all the voices in the crowd are saying. There's a man in Kentucky who built something called the Ark Encounter. You know, it's a life-size replica of Noah's Ark. Some say, you know, that man spent all that money. He spent his money foolishly. Oh, he could have took all that money and helped somebody else. Yeah, he could have. But let me just say this. If God spoke to that man about that and told him to do that, who are we to say anything? Who are we to criticize anybody? Somebody's always going to have something to say about something. I don't care what you do. So I'm here to tell you, do not listen to the voices in the crowd. Listen to the one true voice. That voice comes from God and no one else. So no matter how good a person you are and how well you strive to be like God, you're going to have somebody saying something. And it's hard to tell where it comes from. Sometimes it comes right from the house of God. Even people that mean well are going to say things at times. Remember when God directed Noah to build an ark? It had never rained, but He did it anyway. It was a foregone conclusion in His mind. God said it, so I believe it. I'm going to follow it regardless of what everybody else has to say. Heaven help you if you're following what everybody else thinks you're supposed to do. I can you imagine the names Noah was called? Can you only imagine? Well, you know what? It worked out for him in the end. And remember at times when you're following God, people are going to call you all kinds of names. They're going to say you're off your rocker. 
You know, the things sometimes that you may do, they're going to look a little peculiar to the world. You're going to, why are you doing that? Well, I felt like I was supposed to. I felt like God told me this. So sometimes we just have to do it. We just have to follow through regardless. Some people say, why are you doing that? I see nothing happening. Why are you doing that? Well, you know what? If you do nothing, you know nothing's going to happen, right? At least if I try it, I got a shot. That's better than doing nothing. So I'm going to be the one to try something. You know, I can remember one time somebody, you know, I was uh, this one particular ministry. I'm not going to go into detail. Why are you doing that? Why are you spending all that money on that? I ain't nothing ever happening. I said, well, you know what? This time somebody might get saved. There might make a difference in someone's life this time. I feel like God directed me, so I'm going to keep doing it. Oh, I see nothing happening. It's a waste of time. I'm telling you, I don't care what you're doing. If you're serving God and following God, nothing is a waste of time. Amen. Nothing is a waste of time. I'm telling you, keep doing what you're supposed to do. Sometimes, you know, maybe the thing that you're doing is preparing you for something else that God is going to use you for. I have no idea what God may do on the other side of your faith. When you're following through what He said, He may do something completely crazy to you. But you've got to flip, follow through. If you never even do the smaller things, how would you ever get to the bigger things if you're not found faithful in the small things? I would rather try and fail than to sit there with all the complainers and things and, and sit around at the end of my life, oh, I wish I'd have tried. I want to be at the end of my life saying, you know what, I did the best I could. I did the best I could. I didn't always succeed, but I know that I did the best that I could. I didn't listen to all these others. Sometimes in life, you're just going to have to try something crazy. Now, I know some of you I don't have to tell that to. You know, I, I know y'all. I know some of you I don't have to tell that to. And the truth be told, it won't be the worst thing you've ever done. You know, sometimes you just got to follow through on something crazy. I know Noah was probably called crazy among other names, but I'm telling you, I've been called a lot worse names than that. You know, sometimes you just got to follow through. Let's just say this. Noah ended up in the, uh, the Hall of Fame of Faith, if you would. There's a, in the chapter 11, they call that the faith chapter. In Hebrews 11. You know what? He ended up there. So he did something right. He got something right somewhere along the line. So don't listen to everything that you hear. Everything that you hear is not for your benefit. You know, some of those things that you hear are, are to harm you, not to help you. Don't even, even some of your well-meaning friends, don't listen to everything they say. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with listening to getting wise counsel, but sometimes you just can't listen to all that. All of it is not for your benefit. <clears throat> Whatever you have to do, I'm here to tell you to try to follow God to the best of your ability. Are we all going to mess up at times? Yes, sometimes we, get, we get, see it wrong, we, we don't understand it, or whatever it may be. Follow God to the best of your ability. And it all work out for you in the end. See, faith deals with unseen realities. I cannot stress enough, and I say it many times, there's another world just as real as the one we live in. We just can't see it right now. One day, it's going to be just as real. When we, step, when we pass over to the other side, whenever our time comes, it's going to be just as real as the one like we're looking at each other here right now. One day. See, faith allows us to believe things that I can't see or touch. Just because I can't see something doesn't mean it don't exist. Just because I can't touch something doesn't mean it don't exist. Faith causes us to act in such a way that maybe we're a little peculiar to everybody. I was probably worse than that anyway beforehand. So, you know, peculiar might not be that. That might be one of the better names I was ever called. Faith causes us to act in this physical world based on one we can't see yet. That's faith. You cannot see the other world yet. One day you will. But when you, the things you do here is called faith. You can tell someone what someone believes not by what they say, by what they do. That's called cognitive behavior. I don't care what they say, look at what they do. I'm like, this, I know what this guy is saying to me, but his actions are completely different. And I know better. I know what I'm saying. What he's saying is not for my benefit. What he's saying is not the truth because his actions are saying different. If someone says they believe in God, 
yet they do nothing? Mm, I don't know if I'm buying it or not. Just by what I'm saying. I don't know someone's heart, but I'm just saying I know what I'm saying. I'm going to ask you, how do you express your faith? You should, you should be expressing your faith in some way in your life, somehow, some way. Whether it comes out in works, telling about people, or whatever, doing good deeds, whatever. Somehow your faith should be coming out. How do you express your faith? Oh, Pastor, my faith is a private thing. I keep that to myself. What? <laughs> what? Your faith somehow, a great work that God did in your life, somehow you just keep all that to yourself. It doesn't come out in any way, shape, or form. And I know that's going to be different for everybody. You don't express, that's a private thing. Come on now. That is self-centered and that is just being plain lazy. That's all rolled into one. You know God never did a great work in your life for that just for you to keep that to yourself. That, that's not what God intended. I really don't. That's a bunch of baloney. You know it. Somehow your face should be manifesting itself somehow in your life so others can see it. For your faith to be real, it must manifest somehow in your life, some form or fashion. You see, as a Christian, we have a helper. That helper is the Holy Spirit. He strengthens us. He encourages us. He is there for us. You know, sometimes the things that we do when we step out in faith, they are so beyond us. Some of the things that you're going to say, they might have come out of your mouth, but when you're being led by the Spirit, it was the Spirit who equipped you, in a, you know, and said those words. Sometimes, there's sometimes when I, when I say things, and I'm like, when it, it's just like it kind of went out, you know, almost like they had the, on the, the, like the car.